classical mechanics. You know, if I take this ball and I throw it up in the air, I can model it as having a constant gravitational force acting downward on it, and that's it. And it works pretty well. But imagine it was a very, very low mass ball. In that case, I have to also incorporate the idea that there is a drag force. So as that ball moves through the air, it collides with the air. Those air particles colliding with the ball exert a backwards pushing force, and that depends on the velocity of the ball. So the, the faster it goes, the more it collides too. So there's a different models for uh, the drag force. Let's start with the simplest one in the simplest case. In the simplest case, the drag force is proportional to the velocity of the ball. Okay, and we want to model the motion of this ball. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so here I have a ball moving with the velocity v in one dimension. There's no gravity here. We'll do gravity later. We're doing the very simple one dimensional motion, the backwards pushing air, uh, and that air resistance force is going to be some constant that depends on the properties of the fluid or the air, the size of the ball, the shape of the ball, and all that stuff, and that's the velocity. So if it's moving in the positive x direction, the velocity, the force is in the negative x direction. If it's moving in the negative x direction, the velocity is in the positive direction. That makes sense, right? Okay. So how do we model the motion of this? Again, this is one-dimensional problem. I'm not going to write vectors because we don't have to. Let's write down Newton's second law. So Newton's second law says that the net force in the x direction is mass times acceleration. I'm going to write the acceleration as A. I'm not going to write it as x double dot, even though that we could. So here, what's the force? Negative BV, and that's going to be mass times acceleration. Now, since I have velocity right here, I'm going to write the acceleration as the derivative of velocity. So it's dV dt. So there, there I have it. Differential equation. I have a differential equation. I want to solve this. Let me go up here and say at uh, v at t equals 0 is v0, and I'm going to say x at t equals 0 is x0. We'll, we'll need those later. Initial conditions. How do I solve this differential equation? It's actually not terribly difficult. We can do it. Let's uh, separate our variables. Let's get all the v's on one side, all the t's on the other side. So if I uh, multiply both sides by dt, divide both sides by b, v, I get negative b over m dt equals dv over v. Right? It's crooked a little bit and that's fine. Now I can integrate both sides of the equation because this side only depends on constants and t, this side only depends on v, I can do that. So if I integrate this side, I get negative b over m t. I have a constant because I did an indefinite integral, but I, both sides are going to have a constant. I'm going to include the constant on the other side. Over here, the integral of dv over v is the natural log of v plus a constant. Okay, now, you can't do that, right? You can't take the natural log of velocity. It's fine. It's fine. Um, let's go ahead and apply our initial conditions at... Uh, t equals 0. If I put that in, I get 0 equals the natural log of v0 plus c. Actually, let me write this. Uh, v plus v0. So c, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so c is going to be equal to negative ln of v0. So if I put that in up here, I have the ln of v minus the ln of v0. This is the same as saying negative b over m t equals ln of v divided by v0. Now that makes me happier, right? Because I can take the natural log of a unitless quantity. However, I don't like it in that, in that form. So let's take, let's raise each side to the, the exponential e. And, oops. And that's going to give me... Uh, e to the negative b over m t equals v over v0, or I'm going to put it over here because it's important. v is the function of t, is v0 e to the negative b over m t. So let's just check a couple things. Does this 
uh, work? Does it have the right units? Does our equation have the right units? Well, if V0 is in meters per second, here I have B over M, uh, since B would have to be Newton's seconds per meter in order to get Newton's. Uh, over here, that's Newton's seconds per meter. If you change that to the right units, divide by kilograms, multiply by time, you get a unitless quantity. That's good. Okay. So and then I do get meters per second. So the units work. Next, what should happen to the motion of this ball over time? If it starts off with some initial velocity, since it has a backwards pushing force, it's eventually going to slow down and stop. So this should slow down and stop. As t gets larger, since I have e to the negative b over m times t, then this does decrease with time. So this would give me a plot of, you know, like this. v is a function of time. Okay, that looks good. What about position as a function of time? Let's find the position as a function of time. Um, let's just erase all that stuff. Okay, so I know v as a function of time is the derivative of x with respect to time, and that's equal to v0 e to the negative b over m t. Um, so this is pretty easy. I can just uh, multiply both sides by dt, and I get dx equals v0 e to the negative b over m t dt, and I can again integrate both sides. So over here, I'm going to get x plus a constant. It's a different constant. And here I have, if I integrate this, I get negative v0 m over b e to the negative b over m t. Because if I take the derivative of this, the negative b over m cancels, and it works out just fine. Now at uh, t equals 0, x is going to be x0 plus c negative v b m over b e to the 0. So c is equal to, uh, I guess I should have added c to the other side. Uh, yeah, let's add c to the other side. So plus c, plus c. So c is going to be x0 plus vbm over b. Now I can put that into my whole thing. I have x as a function of time is this constant, x0 plus v0m over b. And then I have to add it to this, which is minus m over b, no, v0 v0 m over b e to the negative t b over m t. I ran out of room probably. Yep, I did. Darn it. Okay. Well, I'm going to just write it out. You can factor out this thing right here and we'll get our final expression. x as a function of t is x0 plus v0 m over b times 1 minus e to the negative b over m t. Again, what should happen? x should keep increasing over time. As this goes to 0, as t goes to infinity, this goes to uh, 0 and I have uh, 1. It does reach some constant position. So that's good. OK, now we're going to do this numerically and see if we get the same thing. So I'm going to write this over here x is a function of t is x0 plus v0 m over b times 1 minus e to the negative t b over m t. That's fine. Suppose I calculate this velocity as a function of time a different way. Suppose it starts with an initial velocity uh, v and there's a backwards pushing force on it f, where f is equal to negative b v. If I break this into short time intervals of dt as 0.01 seconds, I can assume, we've done this before, right? I can assume that uh, the, the force is constant, even though it's not. So if the force is constant, then 
F equals negative BV equals M. I'm going to write this, I'll just write this as A. So I can calculate A as negative B over MV. And that's going to be the change in velocity with respect to time. I can do that because the acceleration is constant, which I assumed. So this is equal to uh, V2 minus V1 over delta T, where V2 is the velocity at the end of the time interval, V1 is the velocity at the beginning. So from that, I get V2 equals V1 plus A delta T. So I can calculate the acceleration, and from the acceleration, I can update the velocity. And then I can assume the velocity is constant and update the position. I get the same thing. X2 is X1 plus V2 delta T, T2, T1 plus delta T. So I can do one time interval and then do the next and the next and the next. And I can do all my values there. So let's just pick some uh, numbers here, and I'm not sure what's going to work. I'm going to say M is... 0.01 b equals, I don't even know, I'm going to say 1. Uh, v0 is uh, 1, and then x0 equals 0. And let's do this numerically. Let's do this in Python, and then see if we get the same thing. Let's just do it for velocity. If we do it for velocity, we get it, we'll just plot the velocity. Okay, switching over to Python. I've already got it pulled up. Look at that. Uh, let's make a graph. G1. You can't even see that. That's too big. G1 equals graph. Uh, X title equals time. Y title equals velocity. Width, spell it correctly, width the equals 400, height 200. And then F1, let's call it FV. FV equals G curve, color equals color dot blue. Now I need my constants. I said M was 0 0.01, B was 1, V was 1, X is 0, T is 0, and dt was 0.01. Is that right? Yep. Okay. So let's run this for, let's just start with the time-based things, while t is less than 3. If you run it while it's still moving, you can get yourself into a lot of trouble. I don't need to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the acceleration. Oh, I don't have, I do have it. Negative b times m. Neg negative b times v over m. Negative b times v divided by m. So v starts off with some value, but v is going to change there, so that's fine. Now I'm going to update my velocity. v equals v plus a times dt. Now I'm going to update my position. x equals x plus v times dt. And then I'm going to update time. t equals t plus dt. If you don't do that, you're going to run forever. I'm going to plot it, fv dot plot tv. Let's see if this works. You never know. It might not work. That's pretty simple code there though. Okay. I think that it stopped too soon. So let's make B 0 0.01. There we go. Check that out. I worked, I worked perfectly. Practically perfect. Um, it does what we expect. But let's calculate the theoretical value and see if they agree. So let's make another graph. I'm going to call this FVT, G curve, color equals color dot red. And you could put a label in there if you want. I'm not going to. Uh, and down here, I'm going to calculate what that should be. So VT is my theoretical velocity. And I'm just going to use my equation over here, V0. Oh, I need a, a number for V0. V0 equals 1, because I don't want that to change. So this is V0 times... Uh, the exponent of negative b times t divided by m. Now, notice I'm using t, not dt, because this is an exact equation. And I can plot that, fvt dot plot t v t. And let's see how those two things agree. I didn't plot the blue one. You know why I didn't plot the blue one? Because they're on top of each other. 
the two solutions are identical. Uh, that's exactly what I had for the blue one. I didn't change the blue one. So that's a win right there in my column. Uh, if you can numerically model it and analytically calculate it, that's a good thing. So there you go, linear drag. So we have a whole bunch of other things to do. Linear drag uh, falling. We have uh, linear drag projectile motion. Those things we can do. And then we'll do falling for quadratic drag where it's dependent on velocity squared. So that's that. Hope you had fun. The end.